Hi there, welcome to the Culture of Life podcast from Human Life International. I'm Tad Wojcik, the Mission Research Specialist, here with Father Shannon Bouquet, like always. It's great always to be with you, Tad, talking about wonderful things and culture of life. Yes, of course. I changed today. I said, of course, instead of absolutely, <laughs> Father. Um, so today we're talking about a Spirit and Life article you wrote recently um, on Disney, uh, you know, the, everyone's favorite big popular children's entertainment company. Really more than that nowadays, uh, it's a huge multi-billion dollar uh, company and um, you're writing about some disturbing developments that have occurred in the wake of uh, something we talked about in a recent uh, podcast episode, the Florida um, uh, sexual education bill that uh, protects the the children from, I think, kindergarten to third grade, right, from Correct. hearing about anything related to gender ideology Correct. or sexual orientation, any of those uh, agendas. Right. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a follow-up story, because uh, we talked about this before, and I, and I always like to come back when I can, you know, to pick up a subject, especially if there's uh, uh, other things that are occurring. And this is a good example uh, of why we first addressed the subject, you know, to bring awareness to parents, bring awareness to people about what's going on in the culture, what's happening, you know, uh, with, with regard to our families and the values that, you know, that we are concerned about that are not being protected. And so I want to just pick it up, you know, by talking about that bill just for a moment. Now it's a law. Uh, Governor DeSantis signed it into law just recently, and it's called the Parental Rights in Education Law. And so all it did, and you just explained it, Tad, was basically looking at age groups from kindergarten to third grade. And what the law does is it protects the parental's a parent's rights, not only to be informed if something is happening with their child with regard to their you know, uh, health or to their uh, psychology, but also with regard to teaching, what's being taught to them, you know, what's being uh, spoken about in the classroom, and that the parents are not to be you know, kept out of that loop or they are to be informed prior you know, to anything being mentioned to these particular ages and these particular grades. So, I, again, I want to compliment, you know, the state of Florida for uh, stepping forward, uh, you know, to protect our young people, you know, from the propaganda being advanced by the uh, perverse sexual education culture, and also to uh, want to challenge, too, that maybe hopefully someone listening from Florida and, you know, might, uh, I want to see it grow because we shouldn't stop at third grade. I mean, that's still way too young and it should advance much further. And I'm hoping that'll be the case. But for if I were a parent in, in the state of Florida, I would be very pleased to know that uh, the legislator and the governor is protecting my parental rights. And so this is why it was a good opportunity to come back and pick it up, because what we've seen is a backlash, of course, and, you know, by, by the left and by those who are trying to advance, you know, values that are indeed within the secular culture. That's right, Father. So in that context, what does that have to do with uh, Disney? Well, well, Disney now, as, we, as you said, you, you began, you know, uh, I mean, I'm 55, going to be 56 years old. So, you know, Disney, in a sense of its name and much of uh, what, you know, from uh, storytell books and, and so many of the movies. Right, I mean, I Pinocchio, grew up with, Bambi. Yeah, many things, you know, I was raised with and uh, quite aware of. And so Disney has really been kind of, you know, synonymous with the family. I mean, it's always been there, you know, since since my youth. And, you know, and there's a lot of good things that have been advanced throughout the years by Disney, not just as theme parks and you know, which more people might be familiar with, but really all of its, its, its books, like you said, you know, it's naming some of those like Bambi or Pinocchio and so many others. But, but right, today what we films, see is cartoons. a very different, yeah, what we see today though, Tad, is something very different because the industry has expanded, you know, so vastly. And what's happened is they're, they're, they're now being influenced by many different ideologies, different agendas, and this is an example right here where something uh, was exposed. So it was a Zoom meeting that uh, was, was uh, spoken about, it was released, and what it does is it, talk, it has a number of key uh, uh, executives working in Disney that are speaking about, one, not only the response to the new law, and, but also what Disney is doing, has been doing, and is anticipating to do as it goes forward. And a very aggressive agenda that is pushing, you know, this whole LBGT, you know, ideology. It's pushing the whole movement of, of gender issues. Uh, so it's all this is in, in the play. 
And for many of our parents, you know, who are, you know, not really aware of all this, I mean, they're, they're uh, obviously, they, they think Disney is, is a good thing for their children, I mean, and we would want it to be, you know, something safe. But by bringing these columns up to the, to the surface and bringing the, uh, the subject, I'm trying to really make parents aware. You know, we're not trying to see, you know, uh, you know, anything other than for Disney to correct its error, to correct its direction, and to recognize that, you know, it should not be the one that's educating children. You know, it should be the parents that are educating children. But we also want to hold the industry, you know, the social media industry, the movie industry, that has any influence upon our young people, you know, to be held to a higher standard and to recognize that they don't have the right to intrude on the innocence of children, to propagandize our children, and uh, to influence their thought and ideology that, first of all, you know, it's not their right to be advancing in a sense of with our young people. It's, it's a real challenging, you know, moment. And I, and I think to see Disney's reaction, you know, it's quite, uh, quite uh, you know, an eye-opener because it shows how aggressive Disney has been. And it's not something new. We, I've written about this before. I've talked about Disney before. Uh, many others have done this in the family movement, in the pro-life movement, you know, raising concern, raising questions, you know. And now what we see through this uh, exposure is the, is the real agenda happening. And they've now made a, a complete, you know, uh, determination that they're going to do everything they can to advance this agenda that, uh, that uh, is... Uh, something that as a again i think all people but especially parents need to be aware of and they even name you know how the movies are being made what's going to happen within those programs right yeah i wanted to just take a a quote if you don't mind from your column here father you're quoting um something that uh one of the executives on that leaked zoom call said uh various quotes including uh uh, not at all secret gay agenda. That's a that's a quote from the Zoom meeting, as well as adding queerness um, uh, to all the products, the children's movies and shows. Um, and there's a, apparently a tracker to, to to make sure that there's enough gender nonconforming and right. quote canonical trans end right. quote characters. Right. Uh, so that's uh, very clear agenda. Yeah, <laughs> very clear. I mean, and, and, and actually, as you read more of the, uh, the quotes and you get deeper into the uh, into the Zoom meeting, but you begin to realize, you know, this is uh, something that's just it's not just a few employees. These are not just, uh, you know, what you hear as you keep moving into this uh, revelation is how employees of Disney who really don't share these values, who don't uh, share these these positions, you know, who hold more of a traditional Judeo-Christian value, you know, families of human sexuality, they're concerned because they're raising the question, you know, that you know, is this what Disney wants to be identified with? Does it want to, you know, to uh, to advance these agendas at the cost of? And and as a result, with some of the employees who again who do not share what some of the quotes that you're referencing. Uh, are being silenced, which is not uncommon. We, we're familiar with this. Basically, you just shut out the opposition. You just you you, you yell them down, and that's what's happening with some of the employees that uh, are talking about this. And so, it, it really shows you that inside of the Disney industry, you know, there is dissent, there is a, a division, there are different people with different ideologies. Well, it's such you know. a massive company, oh, it's, and it's, oh, of course, and it's like you said, it's multi billions of dollars. And you know, and I, and I love how Do- Governor DeSantis, you know, kind of raises the issue. You know, we're not going to let people, executives in California, tell Floridians how they should be living their lives. Well, exactly. At the, I mean, in a certain sense, uh, according to American. Um, law and tradition a corporation can have take stances on things right, right? but when it comes to the education system of a, right. of a state of the United States of America that's a right. i think you as you quoted governor DeSantis said that disney has crossed a line correct um, and, and I think with that, too, just to kind of just pick it up a little bit further, just kind of backing up a little bit more, but it's not just in, within the, the, the social media, within their movie industry, it's in the theme parks. So basically what you're seeing in, in oh. these quotes is basically removing any recognition of being male, female, you know, the, the language of greeters will be very different. So this is a, a real, you know, effort you know, not just a kind of a, a memo going around that we may think about this. These are now in motion. They are now set uh, in, in direction. And uh, to me, all people 
should be concerned about this. And, you know, and, I, and I've said this many times in other conversations and other writings, Tad, that as a, as a Christian, as a Catholic man, so as a Catholic priest, but, you know, as a, as a disciple of the Lord, you know, we all make decisions and we, we have to start thinking, what is our response to some things like this? And, 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 and I know that uh, people don't like, they find it very uncomfortable when they have to make a stand, when we have to assert ourselves and, you know, and advance our values and stand against the opposition. And it's very, it can be very frightening. It can be intimidating. Any of us who stood out of abortion facilities in prayer and vigil know exactly what I'm talking about. Any one of, uh, of our legislators working in states trying to advance pro-life agendas and messages and family values know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyone who has taken a stand, you know, for something that's not in the narrative of the day, it's a very dangerous place to be, and it can be very uncomfortable. So what I'm raising right now is that I'm, my goal here is to help people to, 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 to recognize, what are we going to do with this? You know, so, you know, basically, we have to make decisions. You know, am I going to support the Disney industry? Am I going to support the Disney, you know, products? You know, and, and listen, uh, boycotting is not, is not an easy thing to talk about. Uh, and but this is something that we need to really start thinking. What, what's going to be our response? Are we just going to sit back and just let them just you know advance this without fighting? And what you said, Tad, I think is good. Is the corporation can do what it wants? Absolutely. You know the law protects it. It says it can do certain these things. That's fine. The owners of the company or the board, you know, they can advance their agendas. Absolutely. However, I don't have to support it. I don't have to put my money to, to buy their product. I can I can make a stand, and that's why I'm raising this conversation. So it's 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 to give people edu- one in, information to help guide them, and you know, and what's happening, but also to also give them the strength to say, do something now. You know, do I have to go on vacation to Disney? No, I don't. You know, is it going to be an inconvenience? Yeah, because maybe I enjoy going. Maybe I like the theme parks. Maybe there's a lot of good things. But those are kinds of decisions that need to be talked about. And, and for people to see, you know, well, a lot of times these big corporations, you know, they, it, what moves them is money. What moves them is when they start losing money. You know, if, if people really, is, if all the Christian population stood their ground on these Judeo-Christian values of family and of the understanding of human sexuality and understanding of human dignity, then we would they, they would not be able to open their doors probably because they wouldn't have the resources to do it. So it takes courage, you know, to do this. And and so I, and I know this is going to probably get you know people a little upset when they when they hear this and you know you know saying oh, what's that priest talking about? But these this is very serious. This is something very very important. And so if we kind of push aside from Disney just for a moment, I brought with me today, Tad, uh, a little something that I'm, uh, I want to introduce to our audience. Sure. Because what what I'm speaking about, what we're talking about, Tad, are principles that the church advances, and that is. You know, where are, put all this aside, where does the church say that these conversations about human sexuality, about these very intimate discussions, where should they take place inside the family? Parents are the primary educators of their children. So it, it, and this is what I brought with me today. It's, it's called the Charter of, of the Rights of the Family. And I'm going to encourage our audience, it's not in my column, I brought it with me as kind of a little way to uh, a little supplement today to try to stir the conversation to get people to see what does the church advance what is she talking about and for her the church always defends the family because it's in the family which is the basic cell of our society and this is where you know the church and i'm going to read a little bit today uh, from it because i want to just talk about it it says you know the family constitutes more than a juridical economic or social unit it's a community of love and solidarity, but this is what it says. It is suited to teach and transmit cultural, ethical, social, and spiritual and religious values. So if I go back to what the law in Florida is, is done, granted, it's not defending this completely, but it, it does raise this moment for us to say, where are these values to be discussed? Where should they be first taught? And the church has always been a voice for the family, for the rights of parents as the primary educators. And so it's within the home that these values, these cultural, religious, ethical values are first introduced. 
And it should not be in the school. It should not be by a teacher, you know, outside of the home. It should not be without a parent at least being aware of what's being talked about. The parent should have the right to say, no, this is not going to be advanced. No, this is not going to happen. And, and or, I, okay, that's fine. I give permission. But it's the parent that makes that decision. And so this is what why it's important to have this moment to look at all of this. So Disney, you know, I might put a uh, something to play. You know, do I want Disney to be the one educating my children, introducing my children to to values that we as a family don't believe? And I think there's a lot of innocence here. I think parents are unaware. I really do. And it's very clear, you know, when you bring the subject up, most parents look at you very dazed because they're not familiar with the characters. I mean, they know the names, you know, because their kids will talk about them, you know, and they'll mention them by name. But when you start exposing what some of the people in the Zoom call talked about, Parents look at you very, very puzzled. What do you mean they're doing that? And that's why this is an important moment. Let's really put the pause and let's look at what we, we are introducing to our children. What are we putting in front of them? Right, and especially because uh, for children in particular, but really for people of all ages, the kind of movies that Disney makes... Uh, including with Pixar, the animated films. I mean, they're really spectacular. They're, it's it has the power to affect you. You know, Roger Ebert, Ebert the famous film critic, says uh, used to say film has the capacity to move people in a way that uh, no other medium can. And then when it's animated, there's something that really can. It's the the potency of it is is right. so measurable in children. I mean, it these people. I even. I didn't watch that many movies growing up, but it, even I have that kind of sensibility that was of kind course. of cultivated by a lot of these classic uh, children's films. And then if you're introducing kind of, I wanted to mention um, this concept, the corruptio optimi pessima, which means the corruption of the best is the worst. This is an right. ancient theological concept, but right. just this, it's, there's something very truly insidious about kind of the, the desire to take what is most innocent and pure in our culture had been uh, for many decades, um, even throughout decades of not good stuff in other sectors, at least the mm -hmm. children's sector was pretty clean for a long time. Right. It seems that now it's kind of that era is coming to a close, and that's what you're trying to highlight for right. other for parents. Exactly, and and you're making me think, Ted, of John Paul II. I, I think it was his last pastoral visit to the United States, and, and he was uh, uh, speaking to the uh, the media, so he was preparing to leave the country, and he wanted to thank everybody, and he did, and he went to the last little talk, and he ended, if not uh, that uh, the talk, by addressing the media and thanking them you know, for the service they provided by bringing this pastoral visit to all the people of the country and around the world. But then he took time to, to also make a challenge, and you're, and you're highlighting it. And he was talking about the, the, the power of, of the media, the power of, of, of television and, and the whole movie industry, because it has the ability to, to augment how people think. To, it's about information, what people receive. And so here, you know, what you're bringing up is innocence. A child is innocent. You know, a child is, is, is fully innocent until they're introduced to things that are contrary, you know, to their imagination and to their curiosity. And if unguided, it can lead them astray. But that's, again, back to parents. You know, if parents are guiding those values, setting those moral principles, teaching them right from wrong, and, and obviously if they're supported you know, by good uh, material. So, you know, those wonderful things that I remember growing up with, uh, and again, back to Disney, you know, some of those early cartoons and the stories and the books, I mean, they really, they kind of picked up those values. They talked about those values, the, the respect for other people, the way that you uh, care and the way that you give of yourself. But what we've seen is a real shift, you know, uh, in the thought and in the movement. And this is what should raise a tremendous amount of concern, especially as characters change, take on more political, cultural ideologies that we see today. Uh, and so what we've done now is we've introduced a child, you know, uh, into a way of thinking, into a mindset. Uh, and that's a tremendous danger. And, and, and so uh, the idea here is, you know, I'm not naive. Anyone who remembers any of the cartoons of the, of the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, sometimes there are lots of innuendos that will fly. But again, mostly adults pick those up. But the, again, the, so nothing was perfect. I mean, and so I'm not naive. 
However, we've seen a, a, a much more of an aggressive use no, of and these. overt, right? right? Because in the in those times, you know, if you want to stick some kind of innuendo in the in the Flintstones or whatever, it's very subtle and right. Not ultimately consequential for a child watching. Right. right. But you um, also had more people who were critics, and you had more people who were saying, "No, you cannot do that. You cannot introduce that." And and I think you know just the the idea that today that sensitivity, you know, Tad has been lost. That moral compass, if you will. Uh, I mean, today, you know, I remember someone telling me, and again, I haven't, I can't prove it right now. I don't have a computer in front of me to look it up. But I was told, you know, that uh, from again back to my age, a little, well, actually uh, uh, older than me. Uh, when I was born, but the the whole Leave It to Beaver episodes, and I understand that a pilot program uh, was where the boys uh, were uh, uh, Wally and Beav were uh, were going to uh, show it a little alligator or some in the in their in the in the bathroom lavatory, and they had taken bo- box tops and sent them out. And I'm, again, I'm now dating myself with the conversation, okay? <laughs> but the the um, the censor refused to let them show a bathroom on TV. So you th- now, if, if so, what I read, if it's true, if that pilot program, as it as I just explained, is a true representation of what happened. The sensitivity. Why we would not show a laboratory in a bathroom? There was something at that at that period that recognized um, that this was just not appropriate to show. The boys were doing nothing wrong. They were just inside of a bathroom, you know, and we're going to use the laboratory to put the little alligator or crocodile, whatever it was. But think how far we've come now, Tad. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, really, how far we have shifted. Where really, the, the, you think about what are the censors really censoring today? I mean, what what kind of what kind of uh, script are they following? How far can you go? What well, is the edge of of your censorship? Well, in some ways, it might be the other way around, right? Because we saw that, uh, as you highlighted in your article, there was a, a same sex uh, kiss scene that was to be in in the movie Lightyear, which is about the character Buzz Lightyear from the Toy Story films, right. uh, it had been taken out. And after this, uh, Disney's reaction to this Florida bill, it's being put back put in. Back in. Right. Uh, so so that's kind of the, the reverse of, of cen- or censorship in a different direction, right. uh, kind right. of like... Uh, so, I, I, so I think when you, as, we, as we're talking so you know, openly about, it, about this, it shows you how it touches on so many things. And, you know, and, and again, it's, it's the idea that if we kind of really as a parent, so if I stop and think of myself, you know, as a, as a father, as a mother, as a grandparent, as, you know, just as a pastor, you know, what are influencing, in other words, when I think about, you know, preaching, you know, the gospel and preaching about, you know, what Christ has revealed to us about the human person and the dignity of each and every person, about the beauty of sexual life between husband and wife and all the various complexities of, of the church's teaching on this, in this regard, where should that be first introduced? Where's that first conversation? Where are those answers to be given? And and this is where I want to move that conversation is to really call upon, you know, parents to really take a more active participation in the formation and and, and uh, really the catechesis of their own children. And 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 I'm not fussing, I'm not yelling. I'm I'm just saying what the church is consistently taught. And and I think what we find today is this is a moment where basically a line has been drawn in the sand. And and Disney has chosen its ground. As Governor DeSantis remarked. Very clearly has noted. And others have done the same thing. And uh, we know where the, the, the left will, will place themselves. We know where the social media and the whole industry is out there today. But for us, are we going to make a stand? Are we going to recognize as a church, as a people of faith, uh, you know, not just Christians. I mean, our, many of our Ju- uh, uh, Jewish brothers and sisters share these core values as well. Uh, many of our Muslim brothers and sisters share these core values on family and on the, on the dignity of marriage between one man and one woman. And so we have to really stand together. We have to be united. It makes me think of John Paul in Evangelium Vitae when he talks about it being united in an ethical effort. Well, I don't know how more ethical do we need to really have to stand than this kind of conversation. And uh, I really hope it incites people not, you know, to do anything other than recognize we have a problem and we need to address it. And we need to be to, I would say in Florida, you know, people need to contact their legislature and, and thank them, first of all, but push them further. We need to protect our young people. And I think we need to, as a church, 
We need our pastors. We need our, our, our priest and our, and our catechist, you know, helping our parents. We need to help our parents. We need to be supportive to parents and, uh, and not be afraid. Uh, we should not be ashamed of talking about truth, about the beauty of marriage, the beauty of family, the beauty that God advances uh, to us, and, and not be afraid of it. And somehow we kind of cower. We're afraid to, to stand, uh, as I mentioned earlier. No, this is the moment. And if we don't, then, then what happens is if there's no opposition or there's no, no one standing and we just keep supporting the industry, then basically it just means it doesn't matter. And, and of course it matters. It matters tremendously. And, and, and I, I, I'm hoping that this will, will again, invigorate people. Uh, I, this is now, I mean, obviously, this is not something I'm, I've just written about. Many people have picked up this conversation now. When this Zoom call was made public, I mean, there's no hiding, you know, and, and uh, Disney is, can't deny it. You know, the, their executives cannot deny it. It's out there. It's been said, you know, you can see from other employees uh, with how they're being treated, who maybe who are disagreeing with it, uh, that agenda. So this is a real, uh, it's a real issue, and uh, and I, I don't want it's not, none of my business to get inside of Disney's corporation and, and business itself. However, it is my business, and it's your business and our business when we see uh, a corporation that is uh, purposely, intentionally trying to influence how our young people think and how they respond to situations and how they uh, are presented moral issues or ethical dilemmas and uh, and ill prepared. That's not that's we have to do something about that. Right, and well, really because. Um it's Disney as well as all of Hollywood and the social media industry um, it's kind of distinct but very related to each other um, uh, the entertainment industry those are the formators of our children nowadays uh, in, in our American culture and so that kind of I wanted to talk a little bit about that because that that kind of exemplifies the power of, of art and creativity that you're talking about um, St. John Paul II, he was uh, he was an artist himself, a, yes, a playwright, exactly. and wrote uh, f- the letter to the artists. Uh, kind of right. uh, tried to to incorporate that into his teaching. It's a, it's a powerful. Uh, it's a for, it's a f- it's uh, formative. Artists are formators of of yes. the culture, exactly. and especially of children with uh, children's media. And so, in that sense, when when we're talking about a boycott, um, I think there are two questions that arise, Father, because you know a lot of people will say. Even if we're, you know, even if we get to a point where we say, okay, this is enough, we have to, you know, kind of stop feeding the beast, as it were, feeding right. the mouse, <laughs> as right. some might say, because um, it's gone too far already. Where do we go? You know, it seems that we have to, one, as Christians, kind of almost find our own uh, sources of, of 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 entertainment and media. Right. And two, another thing which I, I think some people might not talk about as much, but maybe we can bring up here, is that we sort of have become beholden to entertainment in our culture, right? A little too much. I mean, certainly leisure entertainment is an aspect of leisure, and that can be a virtuous thing, right? right? But um, So those are those two things, is finding Christian media, Christian entertainment, um, not just from the past, but new, new things we can create. Sure. And then also kind of maybe teaching ourselves once again, mm-hmm. that uh, entertainment's not the be-all, end-all of life, sure. right? Well, let's pick up the first thing a little bit that you that you kind of you kind of preface going into those points, and that is the support of creativity. By, by I mean, I remember you know participating you know in summer programs and you know different arts and crafts you know being you know from carpentry to painting to you know various ways of just being introduced to to a child is curious uh, has a great imagination and it's and we never want to stifle that we we really want to encourage and and the arts and the sciences have always been you know really been part of our our, our shaping our culture shaping how we, we 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 look at things and how we we speak of issues and we don't want to see that. Stifled well, by it's, any it's definitely means. a Catholic thing too. The Catholic Church, in particular, of course, of course, the Church has been a great advocate for for, for all this for, for decades and centuries, and and I think it's something. So by and I'm glad you said it because by no means are am I saying okay, we got we, we just got to shut everything down. That's not what we're saying here. What we are saying is there has to be a balance and approach here, and and the balance and approach is that we need to recognize that something wrong that's being introduced 
and, and, and really that is not good for our culture, it's not good for our society, it's not good for our families, it's not good for our children. So we all suffer as a result of things of this nature. And, and so no matter how much good they, they try to, to paint it as, no matter how much they try to paint it as, you know, uh, loving people and caring for people, of course the church is for that as well. But, you know, at the same time, we recognize there's a harm here. And the harm is advancing something that is false. That the, the idea here that God did make us male and female, that's an undeniable truth. And to give any pretense that this is not the case is a falsification. And so it, it does harm. And it causes a, a litany of problems, which we're now seeing in our culture. So we, we, we don't want to see this continue. What we do want to see, Tad, is where, again, how can we you know, support an industry or industries that advance the good? You know, and, and, you know, I've seen many camps, you know, uh, in summer programs advancing uh, the arts in the sense of, uh, of, of introducing children to painting, introducing children uh, in the ability of drawing and art. It's, it's, it's remarkable. And I loved when I was back in, in diocese and working in schools, going to art class and just watching children draw and just watching their imagination come alive. And, and it's just, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. And, and to encourage that is so important. We don't wanna see that stifled. So that's one thing we, I wanna say that, you know, now again, what's untragic today is in many of our educational systems, these very things of music, for example, uh, uh, the art, uh, you know, the, the, uh, are not because of funding. They're not readily available. So that's, that's a challenge today. I can tell you that in some of our Catholic systems that I've been introduced to, these are some of the things that are not uh, available as much. You know, and that's very disappointing. You know, we should be advancing you know, uh, the beautiful art of music and, 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 and the arts that we're talking about. But, and especially because, like I, like I said, we, we should be able to de- redevelop a, a Christian ethos in popular entertainment. Exactly, which is what John Paul, we talked about was advancing yeah. himself right. and supported, very beautifully supported, and, and, and the church still supports today. And now with that said, let's get back to that second point, which was mm-hmm. in instance about boycotting, you know, talking about that. And, and here, you know, we, we do have to recognize that we, we have to say that something, this is, this is right or this is wrong. And when we stand for something good, then we, we, we advance it, we promote it, we encourage it. And when there's something that is not good, something that is not healthy for our society, and especially for our young people, we make a stand. And, and this is what we have to do now, not just with Disney. Disney is just the one that's been exposed. All right. There's many, many others that are uh, that are in this industry that are young people from the video games and, and industry and and some of the other you know social media uh, uh, outlays that are out there. There are many things influencing our young people. All right, and not just young people influencing the general population, and and so we need you know to to recognize. I go back to what the, the the preamble of the charter and the family talked about. Where's the first school of learning? Where are cultural values taught? Where are moral values taught? Where are those ethical values taught? They're taught within the family. So, for example, I'm an adult male man. I can filter. I can discern. This is good. This is not good. Why? Because of my own formation. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. Doesn't mean I make a perfect decision every time. But I know right from wrong. And I know what I should avail myself to and what I shouldn't. And it takes great discipline to say no to what is not good and to say yes to that which is good. And But I learned that in my own family, and it was nourished in the family. So I can I discern, I can go to a particular movie, all right, that might have an element that might not be good. I can filter that out, all right, and move along. But you, you're talking about a three-year-old, a, three-year-old, a five-year-old, a six-year-old and above— well, they don't have those filters yet. They haven't learned how to discipline the, those things yet. And so we need to recognize that there's a balanced way of approaching this. And if we prepare our young people well and, they, and we form them properly in those values that come from those first formators, our parents, then they're capable of dealing with the things that, that come their way and still need our support and still need our guidance. Uh, but as a culture, you know, I think as leaders within the culture, we're doing a, a tremendous disservice, you know, today. And we're allowing, you know, certain mediums to determine the moral values of our, of our country. And, and this is a dangerous thing. And, uh, and so I, I think that it's, it's, it really is a moment 
uh, of time that uh, that's going to determine what the next generation is going to look like. You know, and, and, and if we don't do something now, then what moves forward is going to be even more difficult. And very few people like to talk about all this. I connect the dots, you know, in, in a sense of the pieces of the puzzle. And when we go back and we look at, you know, how this country you know, sadly, you know, imposed by our Supreme Court, you know, the, the, the taking of a human life, you know, in the womb, abortion. And, and then people, you know, will scratch their heads. And you hear this in, in, in the pundits today and in, in, in their articles and writings and media. You know, I wonder why the violence is increasing in our culture today. And, you know, every day there's murder after murder, you know, shootings. And, you know, if we just pause and think about, you know, what it meant when we said as a country, in, imposed that we can take the life of a chi- innocent child in the womb and kill that child. How is that going to transmit forward? What, what kind of mindset? Mother Teresa talked about it. Many have talked about it. And today what we're seeing is what Mother said. You know, if I can take the life, if a mother can take the life, our father, of their child, an innocent child, then why can't that same individual take the life of another person outside the womb? Well, this is what we're seeing. And we can see this, you know, also in, in many other ways. I just say that because connecting the dots and it's very important. That's why people in the, in, the, in the industry that are trying to promote this, they know the power of that. So if I influence them as young as I can and propagandize them as young as I can, I'm changing that mindset toward what they're going to choose going forward. Well, and they see what has successfully been, what they've successfully done over the past right. century, half century, you know, exactly. with music, with movies, with exactly. comic I mean, books, exactly. et cetera. It used, I mean, I mean, you have, I mean those, that's why this By is such By the way, an these open... are all things that I love, right? <laughs> of I, course. I, I'm a pretty creative person, yeah. and that's why it's so disheartening. Right. Um, Absolutely. And I, think, and I think, you know, just once again, maybe Father, to say that at some point we also have to kind of realize, hey, maybe... Maybe we don't have to watch a Disney movie this weekend with the family. We can play a game outside or we can right. read, uh, you know, a children's book or, or right. you know, play a board game, do something like right. that. You know? or, be, or be very selective yeah. in what it is that you avail your children or your family to. That's how we were raised. I mean, and so, the, and, and it, again, those values did not change. In a sense of what, is, what was true then is still the same truth today. It's just been lost you know the and so i often often think you know it's as you just said it's been a gradual movement our sensitivities have been you know gradually whittled down and whittled down and what people said all the way through time think about music you know, I love music, and I actually like a variety of music. Me too. I, I do. I truly do. You're from and, Louisiana, uh, and like the so blues. It's, uh, and, 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 but at the same time, there are things that I'm aware that are vulgar. I just don't – I'm not listening to that. And it's out there. And, and so – and these things would, in many ways, would never have been allowed to, to be advanced, you know, unless someone really just gradually whittled down people's sensitivities. It used to be that, as I shared in one podcast before, you know, I travel a lot and I'm amazed, you know, at, at the vulgarity and conversation and language that people use, you know, and, and, and what used to be, you know, in many ways, you only hear maybe sometimes, uh, you know, uh, what we used to call a, a potty mouth, you know, uh, by, sometimes by, by men. Today, it's, it, it's young men, women, you know, all across the gambit. And, uh, and it just, it's so upsetting, you know, to hear and, uh, and, 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 uh, again, it's sensitivity. I think about my uh, how when we were raised, you know, how we respect other people, how we speak. Uh, the reason why we keep talking about this is not nostalgia. I'm not speaking about something always oh, in the past, you know, like it was something that, you know, that we were just going through that phase of life. No, these were values that were passed generation to generation. And somewhere along this path, our sensitivities to those core values, those fundamental values, have gotten lost. And, and, and now today by raising them, uh, you know, now I'm labeled, you know, as being, you know, old fashioned. Or reactionary. You know, exactly. Yeah. And so that's why it's gonna take a, con- a real effort, a united effort on our part. And, 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 I, and I say that again, is, you know, to, to be selective, to be intentional, 
and to be purposeful in what we show to our children, what we introduce to our children. And I really challenge our parents. You know, I know it's very difficult today in our culture. You know, many parents work outside the home, and there are many, uh, their children today are being, you know, influenced by not only school systems, but after school care, babysitting services, daycare, so many different environments today. And it's very difficult for parents. But all the more effort has to be put in to sit down and talk to your children. What did you learn today? What, 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 look at their textbooks. See what they're watching. What, what have they, what's going on in their life? Listen to them. Find out what's happening. And, and, be, and, and take a more aggressive stance. And I mean by that is be of great interest in what they're being taught. Because you might find out that uh, your children are being, you know, exploited and, and there's a, a propaganda being advanced to them that you yourself do not believe in and, and your children are being taught something contrary to what you believe in your values. And, and that should be of great concern. So, and I, you know, I would just say, you know, a way of bringing us, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to the, the end of our conversation, if you will, right. is from, as priest, you know, uh, I know that our, our task is obviously is to help people, to, to, um, to support them, to inform them. And I would say to, to my brother priest is we need to talk about these things in a gentle, firm, but very intentional manner, you know, to, uh, to bring to bear you know, these kinds of conversations in working with parents and helping parents. We need to support them. We need to walk with them and, and not be afraid to, to bring up things that maybe are very, in, uh, that are uncomfortable, you know, uh, in different environments, whether that be in moments of preaching or whether it be in moments of catechesis, whatever those moments may be. It could be writing something in the parish bulletin. You know, just talk about it. Get people to think and, and know that, yes, you're not going to satisfy everybody. It's going to prick the conscience of some. Some are going to be very upset. But, you know, Jesus himself gathered and scattered. You know, so we, we should not be afraid of this. And, uh, and, and the church, as I mentioned with the Charter on the Rights of the Family, has a beautiful, beautiful library of information to guide all of us, priest and our lay faithful. So uh, this is, uh, I, I know this won't be the last time, Tad, we talk about it, because this, this, this battle now has been drawn, uh, and, and, the, and the players are very clear here. And there's no doubt that Florida, Florida is going to set a stage for this kind of conversation. You can see this moving already, uh, uh, not only from the legislature and the legal, but you can see how this is going to play out, you know, and how people will approach, you know, uh, uh, what's going to happen going forward with regard to Disney. And now that people know what's happening, uh, we'll see how it unfolds. Yes, we will. Thank you, Father. Um, that's uh, so a lot of lessons to be learned here. Uh, we could go on for a while about this because it's a huge hornet's nest, really. But um, you know, we should probably close it off there. And uh, hopefully our viewers and listeners um, uh, felt like that was a, a good chunk of, of uh, meat to bite on. Um, so I would say to have it good for, just before sure, you close, yeah. just say this is for those that are interested, there are links within my column that will lead people to the articles or to the uh, to the quotes and various things. Okay. Uh, if, if people are interested in learning a little bit more uh, about what's what 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 we referenced here in that Zoom meeting, and that way they can go to the, uh, to the uh, to my article, right. Spirit and Life, and they can they can click on that link. It'll open them up to that. That long, larger conversation, and for our, those that may not be aware of that, uh, the parental rights education uh, law, it'd be good for them to look at it. Again, it's not a perfect law. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's a perfect law, but it, it's it's that first, if you will, little stake being put in the ground uh, to protect the rights of parents and to protect our young people. But it'd be good for people to be familiar with it, um, and maybe uh, you know those that are involved. Uh, and I'll close with this: is what uh, Pope Benedict talked about. Even Pope Francis has made reference to John Paul. Definitely did. Uh, but I, I think of Pope Benedict. You know, and you know, we don't run away from these moments. We don't cower in a corner and think that we can't change it. Oh, they got more money. We'll, we'll never be able to fight that fight. You know, they have more power. They got the government with them. They got all this industry with them. We'll never win. If we took that approach, we would get nothing done. No, Benedict said we run toward it. But we don't run to cooperate with it. We run to be a voice salt and light, use the gospel. We go toward it. So we need good people in the legislature. We need good people in the judicial, legal, 
you know, branches of our government. We need people in the, on the school boards. We need good people, you know, to get into the media, into and, and uh, as we've been talking, into the into the arts, into the science. We need this. I mean, the church advances this. That's why we have the the wonderful academies in in, in the Vatican, you mm-hmm. know, to promote these and to advance them. So we 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 don't run away. We don't pull back. We run toward, we understand the issues, we educate ourselves on the issues, we become very informed, and then we run toward it. We enter into the battle, never run away from it. And I, 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 and again, our holy fathers of, of, of recent memory, my memory, have, are encouraging us to do this. And I would say that's a good way for us to, to, to end our, our little program today, right. just of encouragement. Don't be afraid, stay focused, stay faithful, be courageous, and unite. Together, Tad, we make a difference. You know, alone, I'm one. But if I pull people together and we build, we build this together, then we can change the conversation. You know, that's what the other side has done. And they've done a, they, I don't want to compliment them too much, but their strategy worked. We have to employ their same strategy to, to move, our, move what we know to be right forward. So do not be afraid. Enough said. Thank you, Father. And... Um, yeah, thank thanks for that. Also, we should uh, one more resource. We can find you can find the Spirit and Life article on the website hli.org and the Charter on the Family on the Rights of the Family in um, on the Vatican, Vatican website. website. Right? If you just type mm-hmm. in Charter on the Rights of the Family, it's 1983 is when uh, this uh, pre- uh, this Charter was actually uh, promulgated. But it was first mentioned in Familiaris Consortio, the Church in the Modern World, in 1981 by Pope John Paul II. Okay, wonderful. All right. Thank you all for tuning in, um, watching us on YouTube, listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Amazon, and Spotify. Um, uh, please uh, subscribe, like the video, do whatever you can, spread the word, um, and keep on living the culture of life. God bless. <laughs>